All right, so I'm doing a maintenance, and one of the things I ran into on my maintenance is a cooked wire coming off my contactor. So one of the things you have to look for when you find a cooked wire like this is, well, you're going to have a loose wire somewhere. I checked my compressor. I checked the capacitor. Nothing's loose. Nothing's moving here. Make sure your power's off before you do everything. But the one thing I didn't first check, let's pop out the contactor. The contactor points look pretty good, at least from what I could see. We'll remove it and take a look. But that's not going to be the cause of this, unless they're really beat up. Really beat up, causing something to overheat. But that is what happens with pitted contacts. So. As you can see in here, this is a little beat up. So I'm gonna recommend replacing it. And the other side also is a little beat up, but not bad. But the one thing, look at how that wire moves. So it's a loose connection. You're not, you don't want these to move. If you've got it moving, you got a loose connection you can definitely cause it to over amp. And look at its shape. That's been stretched and somebody put it back on anyway. And that led to this. And the only fix for this is pretty much to cut it out and replace it. But before you just fix it and move on, always make sure you find out what your actual cause is. Here, cutting it off would actually resolve your problem. A lot of times it won't. It could be a wire on one of your lugs in your disconnect. It could be one of your compressor terminal wires. So you want to make sure you check that too. It could be anything. It could be, like I said, a capacitor wire. But before you swap one of these out, always make sure you locate what causes, because this doesn't happen on its own. This happens from a loose connection. That's the only reason why you get this bubbling and melting and overheating of the wire. Let's cut this off right about. I'm going to cut it back. Because if you go too close, you'll have a hard time getting that insulation off because it's just hot and melted. So I'm going to say somewhere behind here should be safe. And if it is safe, I should go get my wire strippers, but I left them in my truck. And I also am not going too tight on here because one of the things I don't want to do is take away some of my needed wire because one of the things I don't like which also isn't that great is my compressor common is tied on here so I'm going to take this wire here and this is going to end up on the contactor I'm going to have to take that out and that's going to go to the contactor I don't like compressor commons going here I know it's a, just a connection and everything, but this wire after there is coming back to my contactor. So now I'm struggling because I just was too lazy to go get my wire strippers. But here we go. We got that done. Now we need a connector. I got one connector left. I got to put more in here to a connector. And my crimper I always keep in my bag because you never know when you need to fix anything. I probably overstripped it, but let's see. Yeah, let's chop just a little tiny piece off the end. Okay. Get it so the whole thing goes in. Okay. And the wire goes right to the top. I'm going to have to recommend inside they swap this and I, I could have just taken this and gone right into here but we have two connection spots here look how rusty and nasty where it even was connected so besides it being a loose connection it wasn't even on a clean connection spot now that's tight that's not moving now we're going to take this hopefully which I may have stretched it I might have to replace that too yeah, it's moving. So what I'm gonna do is instead of replacing it, it's going right into my contactor. 
Uh, you don't have to cut the whole metal piece off. You can actually, if you want, and I've done this so many times, just take that and stick it into your contactor. It's not gonna cause any problems. It's actually just gonna make a spot for the connection. So as long as you could fit it under the screw, just gotta open it more. There we go, we're in. But now before I could replace anything, I gotta get permission from its owner. But this contact is really not the end of the world. Points are starting to get a little, but I've seen so much worse and it still work. So just remember, before you actually just fix a problem, try to find out what caused that problem. Because melted wires don't usually happen just because the wire wanted to melt. Something is over amping, something is heating the wire. And it's not the compressor because I meg the compressor. So I checked the wires on the compressor before I did this. But I just wanted to show you guys what a loose wire connection. Now that everything here is tight, so nothing's moving, so. All right, so here's another one. Same roof. Look at the movement and the play I have. Just pulls right off, no resistance. And look, it, these melted together. So, I'm gonna have to fix that purple wire also. So, I gotta fix these two wires up here, but that's loose connections right there. It's dancing there, and look, it's dancing around right there too. And all that is causing, could be causing the connectors to overheat that they're moving. But looks a little stretched and bent. Let's see where this is going on. What do we have going on here? Mm, maybe a little stretch and bent. This one I trust fixing. I got to see if I could squeeze this one tight. Doesn't look too bad. This, I'm going to wire not the purple wire together. And this I'm going to cut off and put another connector on. Because I do have the slack on this wire. But I just wanted to show you guys what a loose wire connection. Now that everything here is tight, so nothing's moving. So, till next time, I'm Bill and I'm out.